Okay, so sometimes you have an element, like this one is on its own layer, and you want, this would be kind of complex to try to paint a shadow. But fortunately for us, down here in this little FX box here, you have these things called uh, effects, FX for effects. And one of those things is a drop shadow. And the drop shadow opens up a dialog box. And right now I'm, I've got in something crazy because I was playing with it for something else. So I'm going to reset to the default one, which the default shadow is a multiplied black. It sets something up for you. And it gives me a black drop shadow behind this image. Okay, and I'm going to just show you that even though it gives me a default, I can actually reach over here, grab this shadow, and I can move this shadow anywhere I want. And if I don't want to mess with these sliders over here going, gee, how, where do I want that shadow? I want it a little bit here. I want it here. You know, maybe I want it a little darker, but I, I didn't, I need it. My light source is there. Look, just pick it up and drag it where you want it. You know, just put it here. Don't try to mess with these crazy things here. You know, sometimes they can be hard to deal with. Just pick this baby up and put it where you want it. Well, that's all fine and good, but what if my light, well, light source is like way over here somewhere and I really need this thing tilted and I, I know my light is such that it should be cast in a shadow on an angle and, and what do I do then? Okay, so we put that drop shadow on oops, and it's not really what I want, okay? So we got that drop shadow. Let me put that back a little bit. So I got that drop shadow, but here's what you can do with that drop shadow. You can take that drop shadow, go to the layer itself, hover over your drop shadow and right click on it and come all the way down here on your layers panel. And here at the bottom, third from the bottom, it says create layer. Click on that, and now look it. That thing's no longer FX, it's its own layer, okay? Now I can take that shadow and I can put it in the transform mode and I can bend that baby any way I want to. I can make that shadow, I can turn that shadow and put it where I want it to be and I can, I can change the opacity on it. And like most shadows, right, the, the, the further away a shadow gets, it gets a little blurrier. So maybe I want to, I want to add some blur to it. So let's, you know, I can go up here to the blur and I, well, I probably want to make it a smart object first. And then I can, you know, I can add some, I can, I can add some blur to it. So I go down here and I can add some blur, some Gaussian blur to it. So I put a little bit of blur in it, make it blurrier. Okay. And, and well, gee, you know, I really only want that blur. I only want that blur to be on the top part of it, right? Because, you know, blur is only, it, it's blurrier the further away from it than it is when it's close. So I can throw a mask on here and then I can grab my gradient tool and I can, I can tell it to not blur it down as much down here, right? So I can, or I can take my brush and I can, we want to make that blur a little bit less or that shadow a little bit less out here. We can take our gradient tool and our mask. And so gradient, make sure our gradient is in basic. 
foreground to transparent, put it on black, and then just fade out that shadow a little bit there. Because, you know, our shadows, the further away they are, right? They're a little bit less dominant. So, so we can take that shadow. The idea here is that, yes, you have a drop shadow. And a lot of people just stick a drop shadow on it and they're done with it, right? But you can take that drop shadow and you can turn it into its own layer. And now you have a whole compositing element where you can take that shadow and you can bend it, twist it, do whatever you want to do with it to fit your composite. And you can make it its own element by just turning it into its own layer.